Great morning, great morning. We're on attention, of course, and we are purposing this morning to talk about faith building. Faith building is what we do because remember, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So we're going to look at Jacob, whose name is changed from Jacob to Israel, and God himself tells him to go back and build um, back to Bethel where he first had a an encounter with God, which is in um, Genesis, the 28th chapter. And the song came to me where it says, Take me back, mm, take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. Take me back, mm, take me back, dear Lord, where I first believed. I know that exactly, but we're going to look for that song. But that's the song. Um, a lot of times when you get to on a low place in your faith walk with God, uh, God gives us some instructions out of Genesis, the 35th chapter, what to do when your faith is shaken in this journey, because it is a faith walk. In Sabah we say clearly, the just shall live by faith. And so God told um, Jacob something in the 35th chapter of the book of Genesis. And so we're going to pray and we're going to uh, sing that song. Take me back, mm, take me back to the Lord, to the place where I first receive you. Take me back, mm, take me back to the Lord where I first believed. And so this talking about Jacob, and, and Jacob is, is being told by God to go back to where he first made a covenant, and God made a covenant with him. And so we talk, we know this is a spiritual house, and this spiritual house is built um, one uh, step at a time, as one, one experience at a time, that your faith don't be shipwrecked. And so all of us come up to points where... Um, we have to make a decision that we're going to go on or we're going to hang up our harps or what we're going to do. And so God is, is encouraging us um, about who he is and what he has said to us that he will not change. And he doesn't want us to be shipwrecked in the midst. Um, so we're going to pray and I'm look up this song. And this um, this song came to me as I was meditating on what to say. Uh, take me back, dear Lord. And it says, take me back, take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. Take me back, take me back, dear Lord, where I first believe. I feel I'm so far from you, Lord. Still I hear you calling me. Those simple things that I once knew, their memories still drawing me. I must confess, Lord, I've been blessed, but still my soul not satisfied. Renew my faith, restore my joy, dry my weeping eyes. And I'm going to put this song on here because God definitely... Uh, I know it's for me, and I know it's for a lot of other people. Because, see, this this pathway we're on is going to be a trying and a proven pathway. It's not like you're going to just, you know, skip all the way to heaven. No, you're going to have some issues. You're going to have some trials, and you're going to have some crossroads, and you're going to have some times like Brother Job and, and, and different ones that God allowed them to go through the time that like the children of Israel, Daniel, Meshach, and Shadrach, they was taken out of the uh, uh, of Jerusalem and put into under the Babylonians. And, and we saw in Psalm 17, David said, uh, these people are your hand and they are your instrument. And David said, and when I finish, and, and even Job said, when I'm tried, I'm going to come out as pure gold. So we know that God allows us to go through things to test us. We talked the other day to prove us. We just was talking about that. So we're going to pray, and then we're going to uh, Genesis, the 35th chapter, and uh, the 28th chapter of, of uh, Genesis, and then Jude, um, when it talks about building up your most holy faith. 
And then the conclusion is in Hebrews, God said he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Philippians 1 says, being confident of this one thing that God who has begun a good work in you, God who has begun to work in you from the time you was a child, will perform it. So we don't always understand, but we have the word trust. We trust you, Lord, that you are able to, to keep what we commit unto you, even if as Habakkuk said, if houses are going in and there's no vine and there's no fruit in the ground and, and all these things that seem to be going, but it's all about you and not about your substance and not about what you own because of, uh, the um, the wealth of a man is not based upon the things that he possess. That's a scripture too. You know, a man is not uh, wealth, it's uh, worth. It's not based on the things that he possess. So you all Worth is not based on material things or things in this world. It's what God has purpose in you. And that is to make you a part of his tabernacle. And that's why it's talking about um, build upon your most holy faith. Build yourself up in God because God has a plan for you. So we are going to uh, remember that song. Take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received. When you, your spirit and God's spirit came in agreement. It's not about the substance. It's not about stuff. It's not about money. It's not about anything in, in this fleshly, uh, carnal world. It's about God's purpose in your life. And he has not changed from his purpose, even though we may not understand <laughs> what he's doing all the time. But we trust him because he's brought us through this. He brought me through this and he brought me through that. He brought you through one thing. He will bring you through another thing. So let us pray. Father, we thank and praise you. First of all, you are the author and the finisher of our faith. You are the almighty, as we are going to see in Genesis uh, the 35th, where you remind uh, Jacob that, he, hallelujah, you changing his name. This is sometime in the point of things happening to our lives at the crossroads of our lives. You change our name. You change Jacob's name to Israel. You change Saul's name into Paul. You change Abraham, Abram name into Abraham. You're always changing our name and giving us new identity. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the new identity which will come out of the trials and the testing that we are going through. My God, I thank you for changing our identity. My God, I thank and praise you. You have a purpose and plan for everything you allow us to go through. And I think right now some identities are being changed. Uh, ID is being changed. So we thank you, Father, as we go into this word, it will fall on good ground and take root in our life. So we're in Genesis, the 20, 35th chapter. And it says, the, the 34th chapter talks about um, Jacob is traveling uh, with his family. And then one uh, uh, of the territory they got into, one of his his daughter was uh was uh, defiled by someone of the land. And the two brothers decided they were going to take revenge for their sister, Dina. And they said, we, they went and dealt with them. And uh, now Simeon, uh, Jacob said unto Simeon and Levi, you have troubled me to make me stink among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites in the pairs of sites. And I be few in number. They shall gather themselves together against me and slay me. And I will be destroyed, I and my house. And they said, should we deal with our sister as, should he deal with our sister? So th their sister was was uh, uh, violated. And they said to the father, should we deal, uh, let him deal with our sister as a harlot? Our sister not. So they took vengeance. But Jacob now is at this place. He's in fear that this, because he's few in number and he's trying to make his way back to, um, to, uh, uh, where he had, uh, was sent away because of his issue with his brother, Jacob and Esau. And in, in the father blessed Jacob and sent him away. And now Jacob is coming back with his family and his children and all that. But now trouble has come into his life again. And to the point he feels threatened. Okay, but this is what God says to him. That was the 34th chapter of Genesis. Uh, and you can read the whole account on the 34th chapter. But we're focusing on the 35th chapter of Genesis when God says unto Jacob, Arise, go to Bethel and dwell there and make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleddeth, fled from the face of Esau, thy brother. So God is saying, go back to where, when you fled 
This ain't the first time you've been in this, in this state of trouble. Go back there, and then I want you to build their altar. I want you to build their altar, huh? and go back to Bethel. And Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, put away the strange gods that are among you, and he cleansed and change you and be clean and change your garments and let us arise and go up to Bethel Bethel and I will make there an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went so we're going to stop there because we, we're going to finish reading it but we want to go back and see when he is saying we're going back this song say take me back Mm, take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. Take me back, take me back, dear Lord, where I first believed. And all of us has been in that place. So we're going to go back up um, to uh, Genesis, the 28th chapter, where <clears throat> Jacob is seeing. And everybody know the story of Jacob wrestling with God. And Jacob wrestling with God and God changed his name. He changed his identity. My God, he changed his name. Hallelujah. And so he going back there and God is, and he is now uh, uh, in the 35th chapter at that place again. And God himself is telling him, arise, go back and build an altar in Bethel. And that's what God said. He wants us to go back and build in our, because the spiritual house is being built by faith. And we are vessels of faith. So he wants us to go back and go back and, and, and the foundation in which you begun with God, go back and remember that. Put that back into your remembrance. Oh, my God, take me back. And that's why God, this song I think came up because you, a lot of times when you are tossed and driven to things, God always referred to you. Remember, like he told the disciples when they was hungry. He said, don't you remember the loaves of bread? Don't you remember? So he, in fact, it tells us to put ourselves in remember, put them in remembrance. You got to remember. That's why it's the things that God has done for you. If God did not forsake you then, and God did not leave you in the hands of the enemy, if God did not made a way when your mother and father forsook you, God bears you up. If God did that for you, then God is going to do something for you now. It's only, it's only a trial. Like Job, Job said that he, he, Job refused to give up his integrity. I know that my redeemer, I know that God, even though he it was one attack, two attacks, until even to his own flesh was being attacked. His stuff was gone, but then his flesh was taken. But then he says, no, it said he never, ever doubted God. And these hard times when people, faith is being tested. What did your wife say? Go ahead on and curse God. This situation you're going through can't be, you might, well, but Job said, you're a foolish woman. Well, you're foolish. And go, Job refused to even listen to his wife and say, curse God, because God is testing Job. Okay, so we go back and see when God telling in the 35th chapter of Genesis, when he telling um, him to go back to Bethel. And, and it says, and Isaac uh, called, so we, well, I'm going to skip down and read all of the 28th chapter of Genesis. But we're going to begin at the, um, uh, we're going to begin, we're going to begin at the, uh, Jacob obeyed him. Okay, so Jacob is being sent away by his father because, uh, and to for him to go and find himself a wife. So it says, um, this is the 28th chapter of Genesis, beginning at the 7th verse. And that Jacob obeyed his father and his mother and was gone to Padan Aram. And Esau saw that the daughters of Canaanites, of the Canaans, pleased not his father, and so he went and took a wife of the children of Ishmael, okay? And so, which Ishmael was there with um, Isaac. Uh, so Ishmael, when, when, when an Isaac was born, Abraham has Isaac, okay? So Isaac uh, was uh, in the womb. Well, Isaac was the one that was going to be the child of, of the promise. Abraham had Isaac. But I, uh, Abraham had sex with Sarah's um, a handmaiden and produced Ishmael, which was according to the Bible, is the child of the flesh. So now we see which um, Isaac has given birth. And now we see here that Isaac has brought forth Jacob. And in, in the womb of, uh, of, of Isaac's wife was Jacob and Esau. 
So now Esau, who was birthed from Isaac, uh, he, uh, he ended up going to Ishmael and getting him a wife. But anyway, that's a whole lot of family drama. Okay, so now we're going to see what's happening to Jacob. Jacob, uh, who was fleeing from his brother Esau, has fled, and now he's going out. And he lighted, so Jacob now, he said, he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because he, the sun was set. And he looked and took a stone of that place and put it under him as a pillar and laid on it. And he dreamed. So Jacob is dreaming. Okay. Jacob is dreaming. He said, dreamed a dream. Behold, a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to the heavens. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending. And he, and behold, the Lord stood above the ladder and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father and the God of Isaac. So he's God is identifying himself. I'm the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac. Okay. So now this is Jacob. So it said, the land wherein thou hast, uh, to thee will I give it to thee and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. And thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And to thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with thee. I will keep thee in all places whether thou goest and bring thee again into this land. And I will not leave you. I will not leave you. Till I have done that which I have spoken to you. But see, we in the 35th chapter, Jacob is concerned about his life and his family life. But God has a promise on him. I said I would not leave you and I will bring you back to this land. And Jacob awakened out of his sleep and said, surely the Lord is in this place. I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, how dreadful is this place? This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. So he's talking about this being the house of God. But see, this talking about entering into a spiritual relationship, a spiritual covenant with God. And many a times in our lives, when we're in a dark place and God have come in and made his presence known in the midst of the trouble, that, that, that is an opening. That is the door. It's the, it's the gate to heaven. And he had it in a dream. He saw it. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for the pillar and set it up in for a pillar and poured all upon the top of it and called the name of the place Bethel. But the name of the place of the city was first called Luz at the first. And Jacob vowed a vow saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way and that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on so that I can come again to my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God. And then he made a vow uh, that he would give God a tenth of everything. But what was that? When he said, this is the gate to heaven. This, when he said that is, see, we, when we know heaven is not like this world, it is a spiritual place, okay? It's the kingdom of heaven is a spiritual place. And that's why he said, this is the gate of heaven. This is the house of God. He had re entered in and, and God had given him a promise. God had given him and God, and that's what God wants us to go back and remember when you was at that place before. Thank you, Jesus. I took care of you and I will take care of you now. That's why we go back over to the 35th chapter where Jacob now is saying, let's go back to Bethel. Let us arise and go up to Bethel and I will make there an altar unto God that answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went. God was with me and they gave, um, and they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods, which they got. He told them, wash yourself, get rid of these strange gods. So they sojourned and the terror of God was upon the cities that because when you walk with God, then people around you, that's they're in terror. OK, so Jacob uh, came to Luz, which is Bethel, which we saw in the 28th chapter in the land of Canaan. That is Bethel, and he and all the people that were with him. And he built there an altar and called the name of the place El 
Beth El, the, meaning the house of God. And because God, because there God appeared unto him when he fled from the face of his brother. Okay. And so we see here, God begins to tell him, um, and God said unto him, skipping down to, from verses um, 7 to 11. And God said unto him, I am, I am God Almighty. I am God Almighty. Thank you, Jesus. The song that, are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb. You are holy. So it means going back and building your faith up. What God had, God said, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. And the land which I gave Abraham, Isaac, to thee I will give, and to thy seed. And God went up. And, and see, he said, God began to let him know that he was had changed his name um, from uh, Isaac to Israel. Okay, I want to go to that part. Thank you, Jesus. And God changed his name. Thank you, Jesus. I want to see that part. Because, see, whenever we're going through something, God always uh, moves us and changes our name. I'll write that part down. I don't know if it's right here because I read it already. I've been running back and forth with reading different scriptures. But God reaffirmed his covenant with him. And I'm going I'm to skip and I put the other scripture where he changed his name from Israel to, I mean, from Jacob to uh, Israel. And that, because when God makes a promise and moving you into a higher realm, God will give you a new name. Even in Revelation, he said, he, I'm going to give you a new name that nobody knows. So God is, is the identity and it's, it's attached to the name that God will change where your name was like uh, um, Isaac name he uh, or Jacob name was Jacob was called the supplanter. OK, he was called the supplanter, which he which he, what he did with his um, brother. He called about how he was a trickster. But then God changed his name. Which, so I'm going to put that scripture in there, too, because God not only changes your name, but changes your your uh, um, destiny and your outlook. And God tells him here that he has given him the land. The Almighty said, I am the Almighty, be fruitful and multiply. Uh, and God began to make uh, a covenant with him. The land which I gave to Abraham and Isaac, to thee I will give and to thy seed. And God went up from him in the place where he talked with him. And Jacob set up a pillar and where he talked with God. Uh, and Jacob called the name of the place Bethel. And they sojourned from there. Um, uh, I want to go make sure I see where he changes his name. But anyway, I'm going to write that down. But clearly, he changed his name from Isaac. Uh, uh, um, from Jacob, excuse me. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to Israel. Okay. He changes Jacob's name. Thank you, Jesus. I hope I got, I'm saying this right. Now. Okay. I want to make sure I'm saying this right this morning over here, Russian. But anyway, this is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God changed Jacob's name to Israel, okay? And that means God elevated and moved him to a different position. But the whole, the key thought this morning is um, building up our most holy faith, which is coming to us in the New Testament out of uh, Jude, when God tells us to build up our faith. See, we are on... Everything we do, we are building. We go from um, from glory to glory, from from heights and depths in God. So we are continuously being strengthened in God by our faith through our walk with God. That's what this this is all about. And remembering um, Isaac, okay? Remember him, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We keep mixing these names up, but remembering uh, Jacob. And make sure I'm saying this thing. I'm speaking back and forth but Jacob is the one which Isaac name was changed to okay God began to change our names when he gets ready to elevate us so now we see in Jude the first chapter um beginning at the 20th verse of the first chapter but ye beloved build up yourselves on your most holy faith uh, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in love of God, looking for the mercies of our Lord and Savior Jesus unto eternal life. 
and some have compassion. So really it's talking about building up your faith. When you look back and see, it's talking about you're going to be in hard times. Uh, and, and in these hard times, you're going to, uh, uh, your faith is going to be tried. We're going to go to Hebrews now, 13. But Jude is talking about building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God because the enemy will come to try to take the love of God out of your heart for you to become bitter. That's why we talk about building. Jacob was fearful and God took him back to go back. When I, when you were in, in fear of running from your brother, I gave you uh, grace. When you are in this place and you feel it, talking about love and you want to get bitter, you want to get hard, he's saying build yourself up on your most holy faith. Go back and build the altar there. Okay, so we're going to go to Hebrews. Sorry for the confusion, y'all. We're going through. <laughs> we're going through. I don't care what the rest of the world may do. I'm going through. Made up in my mind. That's what you got to make up in your mind. <laughs> I'm going through. You got to be, it's a mind thing. We talk about the battlefield of the mind. It's the mind. The enemy tries to tell you, you might well give up. Okay, hang up your heart and you might well, but build yourself up. Jews said, praying in tongues and praying in the Holy Spirit and uh, uh, and that God would want you to go back and build from when you made a covenant with him. Go back and build. Bethel means the house of God and and. and and Jacob said, surely this is the gateway to heaven and this is the house of God. But what it means is when you entered into that place, when you entered into that door of faith and you stepped through that door and you trust God, God wants you to get back there. Go back there and see what well, did not take care of you before. I'm going to take care of you now. Now, Hebrews 13, beginning at the eighth verse, and it says, Hebrews 13, beginning at eight. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, be not carried away with divers and strange doctors, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace and not with meats, which have not profited them that have been occupied their ends. Um, for we have an altar where um, they have no right to eat, which serve the table. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin and buried without the camp. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the camp, the gate. Let us go uh, forth, therefore, let us go forth, therefore, w with him without the camp, bearing his reproach. In other words, bearing what he be bore. Let us be with, let's identify with Christ. Okay, by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continuously. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. And but to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. So that's just, uh, the, but then, and then we're going to go down to Philippians. Okay, this is talking us about us. When we get to this hard place or this difficult place, we who have had an experience with God, thank you, Jesus, who have had God uh, open up his presence to us. He wants us to go back and build an altar there. Start from there and go forward, okay? Go forward and praising and singing God because you're fighting not against flesh and blood, but you're fighting against principalities and wickedness, ruler and dark, who is trying to rob you of your faith. Now, Philippians 1, uh, I'm going to go that to uh, Philippians 1, um, Philippians 1. Okay, it says, verse 6, being confident of this very thing that he which has begun a good work in you, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ, even as it is meet for me to think this of you, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in bonds and in defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye are partakers of my grace. So he's telling and encouraging them to continue. Don't give up. God is taking you through a trial. God is taking you through these situations but God will not forsake you. God will not forsake you. And that's what the song, Take Me Back. Mm -hmm. We talk about, 
encouraging you to build up your faith on build up your yourself on your most holy faith if god who has begun the work will perform it himself he is the one working in you and if look at and plenty of examples Job, he lost everything, but he came back. Habakkuk said, even if all these things be, be uh, uh, don't uh, come, if there's no harvest, read Habakkuk. God have us reading these things because God is not thinking about material things, y'all. He know we knew, need those things. He know what we need. And he gives us to pre season when he, pre he prove us, when he's proving us. And we are to hold fast, hold fast to our faith, okay? And um, I think that's all I have here. But it, oh, no, it, I wanted to read too. I was talking about scoffers and arrogant, haughty people coming up. And they're talking about in the last days, they're going to be scoffers and, and haughty people who is trying to pick at you to say, you put your trust in God. Look what's happening to you. Look what's happening to you. You are trusting in God. Look what's coming to you. That's the adversary telling you, look what's going on in your life. And if God was so good, why would you be going through that? Because God has proven me. God has proven me, and Job said, I shall come forth as pure gold. And verse 24, proud and haughty scorners uh, uh, are, is talking about their coming. They come to take you away from your faith in God. The 22nd verse, verse 10 says, cast out the scorner and contention shall go out. Yea, strife and reproach shall cease. So when people are scorning in there, right at the point of your test, here come the scorners. That's what happened with Job. Here come the people talking about what is uh, what should be and and what if it, if you had done this and if you was just here and if you had heard and if all this if but you God is telling you this morning from Genesis thirty five, referring back to Genesis twenty eight. Build up yourself. Go back and build up. Arise. Go up to Bethel and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God. That's what God is saying. Bear, bear, get down and make an altar unto God. God, you have brought me to this place. And if everything is destroyed and everything is gone, you are still my God. And you are still will make a way. And you will perform the work that you've begun in me until the day of Jesus Christ. The devil is a liar. And I'm telling you, this is a warfare fight, girl. You got to know sure. It said, be very sure. Be very sure that your anger holds and grips that solid rock. That rock is Jesus. Hallelujah. He's the only one. That rock is Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's the only one in times like thee we need a savior thank you Jesus. in times like thee we need a friend be very sure be very sure hallelujah that your anchor holds that your anchor holds and grips that solid rock. Thank you, Jesus. You are being held by God. He has not changed. But be very sure that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. That rock is Jesus. It's all about salvation. It's not about stuff. Okay? Uh, the, the worth of a man is not continued upon the things which he possesses. I got to look that up, too. Okay? So we're going to close out. I'm sending this word out as the Lord gave it to me, okay? And when the Lord gives me things, I share them. And clearly he says, go, arise, go up to Bethel. Go to the place in your spirit and in your conscience and in your mind and in your heart and dwell there. And make thee an altar unto God. Thank you, Jesus. And I don't care if wife, children... The adversary, friends, and like in Job, has got something to say. They are not in between you and God. Thank you, Jesus. It's your soul and your spirit connecting with the almighty God. You have gotten what you have so far because God has blessed you. And he promised he will not leave you. And we saw Job. You can see all the time when God restored, but it was the test of faith. 
No one reaches, it says before, a promotion. There is humility. So we know before, even before God promotes, he always, he, in fact, Jesus said, if you would be great, it's through humility. So I, we may not understand. We just want to go rise, 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 going up. But God many times will tell us it's, it's, it's the pathway to a promotion. Many times it's through a humility. God knows what he's doing. And we got to trust him. We talk all day. We trust him. Lord, well, I trust you. Hallelujah. And making sure that my anchor is And I pray whoever who may be experiencing situation, God is faithful. He said he is faithful. Thank you, Jesus. And he does not change. He had the, who has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That's what the word say. Okay, in Hebrews 13, 8 to 16. So we pray for you, and I pray that you continue to pray for me. We are being tested. That's why a lot of times people, I, I used to be uh, all upset if I didn't have no money. I have, because I said, Lord, as long as I, as long as I have King Jesus, <laughs> I, I, that, that song said, I don't need nobody else. But what you're saying is not that you don't want to be with people, but your need and your desires and that you have is coming from Christ. Okay. He, he, he's my all in all. That's what we have to say. God is my all in all. He is our all in all. And make sure that you are holding that your faith is holding and gripping the solid rock. That rock is Jesus, okay? And build up your faith. Let's close out. Father, we thank and praise you for the service. Oh, God, hallelujah, that you have ministered unto us through your word. We thank you for this time of refreshing and restoring us, bringing us back into remembrance of the time that you have, have begun a good work in us, the time when you gave us a revelation of that you, who you were, Lord God. We thank and praise you for that altar. My God, we thank and praise you for the work that you have begun in us. And the souls who hear this, you too, who are going through, Lord, Help them to remember when you when they first believe you and they first receive you. My God, take them back, Lord God. And my God, that they will be anchored, oh God, on Christ. Even in the midst of the storm, that you are there in the midst of them, Lord God. That you, my God, you have made your abode in them and you will not forsake them nor leave them alone. We thank you for the, the glorious outcome that will come and the praise that will come for the testimony that will come forth through their testing and their trials. That they will be, hallelujah, Lord God, they will not be moved. We ask you, O oh God, to continue to be with them, strengthen them, and walk in them and talk in them. It's in Jesus' name we pray and count it done. Amen. God is our God. Thank you, Jesus. And that's what we hold on to. We're holding on to the rock, okay? And so um, we're going to close out. There's a couple of scriptures I've been citing, but I'm going to make sure I go back and try to uh, look them up. Main thing is Genesis, where he says, go arise up, go to Bethel and dwell there. Dwell where you had faith and confidence. Dwell in your spirit, in your conscience. Dwell there. Do, if you, you abide there. Remember it said if you abide under the shelter. But he wants, he wants you to know that place that you, when you came under him, is where you first receive him. Where you believe. There, dwell. He said, dwell there. Okay? We pray for you. And I pray that you continue to pray for me as we continue to trust the Lord. And commit ourselves to the hand. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide in our hearts henceforth now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray and count it done. Amen. Be blessed.